Hi, good morning, you guys. So um, I'll give it just one more moment because sometimes it takes a moment to, to catch up and I don't like getting cut off. It's not as much fun. All right, so um, I'm really excited today because as I'm sure you can probably tell, I got a new phone and the lives are working so much better. The picture is so much better. So I'm really glad I went ahead and did that. So, um, so yeah, very excited about getting a new phone so then these lives can work a little bit better and hopefully we won't be cut off as much. And uh, so, um, you know, I was going through thinking of what I was gonna do for the live today and I was like, I really need to do another craft. And you know, um, I did the wreath a little bit ago and that was really fun and I really enjoy doing the wreaths. I actually do them for, for lots of different holidays and just um, sometimes just because I have so many dryer sheets, it's time to use them. All right, and so, so I did that last time and I was just like thinking and so last week I was thinking of doing one and just couldn't think of one. And I was like, this is crazy. I do all these different crafts. Like it should be easy to think of something, but I couldn't think of anything. And um, then I realized the reason. Well, it's, it's because I do Christmas crafts. So the problem why I couldn't think of anything is because all my crafts just related all the way back to Christmas, every single one. So I just decided that that's just what we're gonna have to do. So my husband laughed at me and he had said, he's like, oh, well, that just means that you'll have lots of Christmas presents ready for Christmas. So I was like, yeah, I can roll with that. So, um, so I thought today we could make these little Christmas ornaments. They're really simple, kind of, kind of rustic, you know, kind of fun. So I really enjoy making these. And like I said, they're really simple and I actually forgot to get something ready. Um, so usually what I start out with or what you'll need to like, it, not something that you probably won't just have sitting around your house. Um, I got these at a thrift store a while ago and that's what started me off on this crazy idea that I had. All right, All right my hot glue gun doesn't want to stand today. It's okay, it's not really needed. All right, so these are actually, my understanding, so I don't I don't know much about this, but my understanding are these are like practice golf balls. So um, I don't know how that works for that. I don't know anything about it. All I know is I got these probably at a thrift store or a garage sale or something like that, or maybe they were even given to me. And um, this is what I decided to make with them. So I, I am going to need to figure out something to circle. All right, so we have this. And so, like you can see, I, I actually have a whole pile of them all prepped. See, and they all have their strings on them. So, so I will do one string to show you how to do it because this is the hardest part, is just getting this string in there. So, um, you know, like a package string? That's like the cutest ones that I have. I, I, I was actually out. These were, like I said, tied a long time ago. So I am gonna just use yarn. But if you guys can get like the package string, I personally like that better. So the hardest part is getting the string to go into a hole and out another one. So because you can see, it's not exactly an easy task. So sometimes what I do is kind of try to prep it I kind of give it a, a pre-hook, see if I can uh, get it to come in and back out. And this is definitely the hardest part, so it might take me a couple moments. And I really don't remember how I did it the first time. So, oh no, I'm twisting it the wrong way. That won't work. All right, let's try this again. If we can't do this, then the rest of it's kind of pointless. You know what, I have a pin here. Let's see if that'll help. All right, because if we can't get started, then we certainly can't get it finished. All right, so I have it kind of like lined up. Make sure that you can kind of see in there. And then I'm gonna stick the pin in the hole and kind of try to grab it. Stick it in a little bit further. Use the pin in the hole. Just kind of try and grab it out. Oh, I almost had it. Like I said, this is the hardest part, I promise. Everything else is really easy. Should have written down exactly how I did it before so then it would be easier now. That's probably why I did them all at once. All right, come on. We're almost got it, almost got it. 
All right. Oh, got it through barely. Oh no, I'm gonna string it out. Okay, there you go. And we're just gonna simply do a knot. Nice and simple, double knot it. Make sure you, your string is nice and long. Um, this one looks to be, I don't know, probably about a foot long. Maybe a little bit more. Go for 13 inches for good measure. All right, so that's that's pretty simple, right? All right, um, so I got lots of different Christmas material. Um, I found that the ones that work better are ones that have like more smaller pictures to them because if you have something, you know, that's a little bit bigger, then it probably won't sit on the ball very well. Like unless you like specifically arrange it, but, um, but yeah, so if you have bigger designs, it's probably just better to save that for something else. Um, so like you saw in the example, this one, we got this one with little, uh, and it's kind of a little bit more of a, of an older type style. So, you know, kind of works with the rustic idea. And then I have those and I have to find something circle. So normally what I do is I go like, um, lots of things need different shapes. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to need a square. So instead of, uh, you know, like pulling out something and try and, I don't know, use a square to actually square it all out or whatever um, and, and measure it all out. I usually just go around my house to find something. So I'm going to go get a bowl because I like working with the circle. So give me one moment and we'll see what I can find. I actually had... Oh, that might work. All right. I think I found something perfect. All right, so I actually had a really amazing bowl, and I used permanent marker the first time I did this, and so it was a beautiful red bowl. I absolutely loved them. My kids broke all of them a couple years ago, but um, anyway, so I used permanent marker when I was doing it, so there was a rim around it because I had used permanent marker, so uh, yeah, I suggest not using permanent marker. All right, so this material, you know what? This one will be a little hard to manage, but we'll do another one of those later. So we'll go with this one. And so it's a little gingerbread guys and some hearts. So it's still pretty sweet. And it's already been used, so that'll make it a bit easier. All right, so I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it. It's kinda of hard to see everything. All right, so I found just a medium-sized pot lid. And I think it will be about the right size. Okay, yeah, you guys can see. We'll do an example. So. You know, it's a pretty good size. Might be a little bit bigger than we would like, but we'll we'll see how that one works out, all right? So medium pot size. Don't know if you guys can fully see it. Scoot you back just a touch. All right, there we go. So just kind of do your lines. And like I said, I usually just look for something around the house. You know, try and get closer to the edge. I'm doing this kind of quicker for you guys, but normally I'm very conservative with my material. I like to stretch it out as far as it can go, so I'd get right to the sides. All right, and just a circle. And I just have my cutting scissors. It's awesome if you guys have something uh, like the, uh, the cutters and everything and the cutting board to be able to do all that on. But I mostly do all my all my material cutting with my with my scissors. So um, I must say that that was a huge pain in the butt for when I was um, doing jeans because what I do is I, any old jeans, I don't throw out. I keep them and I cut off all the, all the seams and the zippers and everything like that. And then I turn them into quilts, into red quilts. So I, I really enjoy doing that, but I've definitely had some trouble with my hands after doing too many of them because, because like I said, I use scissors for the whole thing. All right. So, you know, that's not that much time. You guys all witnessed it. So if you guys can see that. Turn it just a little bit more. All right, there you go. All right, and so it's really, oh, and so um, so when I started making these, everybody thought they were so cute. You know, they kind of look like a cute little pouch, you know? And so everybody, and I, I mean almost everybody is like, oh, what does it smell like? And I was like, uh, nothing. It smells like nothing. It's, it's just an ornament, you know? So everybody was so disappointed by that. So I decided that, all right, for a live, you know, to show you guys a funner way to do it and for me to try something new, let's go ahead and try and make it smell pretty. And it smells pretty. All right, so what I was gonna use, like it still has 
all those holes in it so you can stuff some things in it. So um, we had gotten some of these cinnamon brooms. I don't know if they're everywhere, but we have them here in Texas and they were on sale. So we had gotten a couple of them. Now these ones don't have a lot of scent left to them. We had a friend over who was allergic to cinnamon, so they've been outside for a bit. But anyway, so these ones are nice and small, so we can cut off. Um, and what I was finding is um, about, about like a centimeter and a half is about good for cuts. So let's see if you guys can see that. Just grab a little pinch of it, cut and just stuff in to one of the holes. You know, and some of them will fall out. It'll probably be a bit messy this way. And uh, just keep on kind of grooming it a little bit. So yeah, I mean, this was just extra ones around our house, and I don't know how much they are originally, but we, did, we didn't pay much for ours. So I'm thinking that they're probably between five and $10. So that's, I mean, that's not bad, especially because of how much of it you get. I mean, that would be enough to do a ton of these. All right, I'm definitely making a mess. All right, all right, and so then the other option, like I said, that one, like they're they're a bit older, so they they don't have a whole lot of scent to them. And so um, when I was discussing it with my husband last night, we were going out, and I was like, let's go ahead and get some cinnamon sticks or something. So we have the cinnamon sticks, and it came in a nice little jar. And I'll, I'll be honest, these are not easy to break up, but you'll have to break them up to be able to get them in. So if, you know, maybe a hammer might even be a good idea. So I broke off a small piece and kind of break the same sizes, if you can see that, you know. That's about, what, two centimeters, you know, not much. And then just stuff them in. Just stuff them right in the holes. All right, and that will bring a nice scent into it. Oh, that one still doesn't want to go in. Oh, that one's still too big. Try this one. Break it just a little bit more. So, I mean, this is pretty simple. And um, I actually did these for Christmas gifts for a couple of years. I, I had, um, what was it? That was in Monterey. So I, I used them as Christmas gifts for a good five years. So just really, really simple, really, really easy. Just need to find something circular. If you want to, you put cinnamon in. All right, so then we want to make sure the knot that we tied there is on the inside so just kind of tuck it into the inside okay and if you want at this point like if you're worried about it moving or your hands are jiggling too much or whatnot then you can go ahead and use the uh oh, the hot glue gun that doesn't want to stay up it's just a dollar glue gun it's a really cheap one and it definitely is arguing with me all right but you could just put like a dot of glue um just to help it stay put um it's not completely necessary all right so to get ready for this part we're going to need a bit more string so once more, you know, you always want to have a bit more, like it's better to be able to cut just a bit off than the other. So, I mean, probably about nine inches would be more than enough. All right, so just a little bit. All right, so it does get a little bit tricky like this, but not near as hard as trying to get that initial string through. So then you just put the ball in the middle and gather it all up. Make sure your string is still at the top. That's... That's the important part. Make sure your string is still at the top. All right. Oh, I got the little bunches. All right. And so you just gather it, put it around. Let me see. You can't even see it. All right. There we go. Put it around and holding it at the back there just so you see, you know, it's a little bit of like a, a tongue twister for your fingers, a finger twister. All right, and then you loop it, pull it through, and grab with the other finger, or you can just use your teeth. I That's, that's how I started doing it. All right, and then you just pull it tight and double knot it, because this is where it's going to hold. Okay, double knot it. And then just put a quick bow in it. Finish tying the bow. Do your loop and loop. And there you go. It's pretty simple. All right, so it looks like you'll want to do the string a little bit longer than nine inches. You know, unless you just want a little bow. There you go. All right, so that's pretty simple, eh? All right, and then, and it's
smells pretty. All right, and then what I like to do sometimes when I'm more worried about, you know, like if it's if the string is looser or older, or anything like that, then putting a touch of glue in behind or even before you tie the bow, so then the bow is like tied around the glue. So I'll, I'll see if I can quickly show you that. So we'll do it a bit upside down so then I can still manage. So just on the, your double knot, just put a dot of glue and then tie your bow. And that will help hold that string there. Oh, if I can do it. It's gonna be dry by the time I'm done. All right, glue my fingers. There we go. All right. So, there you go. So that will hold a little bit better. Trim that just a touch, maybe a touch more. There you go. And then you can also, you know, find where the string is coming out in the bottom, just fully find the very, very bottom of it. And you can put some hot glue down there if you want to. And then you don't have to worry about it moving all about. Coming out, coming untied, whatnot. All right, so that's it. It's pretty simple, right? Here you go. And um, another thing that I did, like I said, I did these for quite a few years. I had a different material that was, was a plaid. So, um, oh, I wanted to show you guys one other thing. I can find it. All right, so this one, you can see how it has a few more spikes and stuff. You know how it's like sticking up a little bit in comparison. So I actually used a square for that. So these were pre-cut squares that were, um, I, I don't even know where I got these, but they were already pre-cut like that. And I was like, you know what, it's probably about the right size. Just take it as the example, you know, and just wrap it around and see if it works. So you can do different, different shapes, different sizes, whatever you can find around the house. And as you see, and um, for an example, I was thinking of pulling out my little Christmas tree, but I know how buried it is. I really did put it away for good already. But we can use our little broom as our example. There you go. See? They're so cute. And like I said, they smell. They have the cinnamon in them. And how easy was that? I mean, how long has live been going on? A few minutes? What? Uh, not even half an hour. So not even half an hour to fully cut out. And I find like um, with this system, because I never do just one. I just did the, the one just for you guys. Um, so I what I normally do, um, like I said, I already have those all tied. So, you know, pick a time where you're going to do all the ties because it's going to be a little bit frustrating. You know, like it's not easy to get them through. And the pin definitely did help. So if you have a pin to be able to do that, that's great. Um, and then usually what I do is I trace out all the material that I'm going to do at once. So, I mean, if you're going to do it as a gift for a family, you know, you're going to do five, then go ahead and trace out all five of them at once. Cut them all at once. You know, maybe just do that in one day. Um, when I started doing crafting and sewing, my kids were still really small and they were still at home. I'm able to do this because none of them are at home right now. Um, but they, uh, you know, like they, they always still needed me. You know, I only got little, little chunks of time that I was able to do things. And so instead of being discouraged that I wasn't accomplishing things, um, I, I really found that it helped if I just reminded myself that it's one step closer. It's, it's a little bit closer. This little bit will get me closer and eventually these little bits add up to accomplishing something so if one day you you go ahead and string through five of them you know and do do five strings and be like okay you know like I only got 10 minutes today and that's what I got done be happy about that that's one step closer and then I, I usually do all my cutting in one day usually I, I sit down and um, I do lots of different things that uses material and so I'll sit down and cut it out you know draw out and sometimes sometimes that's all you get done like maybe you just put your circle down and you circle, you know, get your five or six circles down and that's all you get done that day and that's great. Um, so I, I guess I wanted to encourage people because I know that crafting can be really hard, especially when you still have little ones home or you just have a little bit of snippets of time, but it's definitely something you can still do and this really does not take much time. It doesn't cost that much. As, I mean, I, I really don't know how much these normally cost. Um, but it certainly didn't cost me much. And, you know, for material, you you could probably get, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 out of a yard of these. So, I mean, it's it's a really cute way. Oh, and the other thing that I really like to do is um, use some of the, the, what is it called, fabric paint, 3D fabric paint. And what I'll do is, like, I'll, I might put a letter on, you know, if it's for specific people. So, um, let's do... 
Not a very pretty one because I'm doing it fast. All right. We'll do okay for Crystal. Oh, I guess it's backwards for you guys, but <laughs> but do the, the little ornaments and you can just put them like a, keep a, an egg carton and that egg carton will help keep it, you know, that it's not going to get rubbed or roll on you. You know, if you set it down, you might be able to get it in a good spot, but you never know. So I'm just going to use the top of my, uh, my cinnamon jar. All right, so that's pretty much it. So you can do them individualized or just do them as groups. And like I said, I've given these away for gifts for years and, and they're just cute. And now they smell good too. <laughs> so definitely try this in a minute. It's definitely more fun and then people won't be smelling it and you having to say, oh, it doesn't have any smell. It's just a cute little pouch. Um, and you could probably break up some potpourri and put it in or anything like that. Um, whatever you whatever you guys decide. So I hope you guys enjoyed this live today and uh, I hope uh, everybody can accept that I'm Christmas crazy and that there'll probably be a lot of Christmas crafts. Um, the, it, it just seems to be what I'm drawn to. So um, so yeah, so definitely keep on watching <laughs> if you guys are interested in getting stuff ready for Christmas and being able to save a bit of money just by, by making your own Christmas presents. So I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Oh, and my new phone doesn't want to...